Good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday, January 8th, 2014. January 8th, 2014. And this is a more hopefully detailed version of a review basically a more detailed audio version of a review that I did very shortly um, on camera the other day. And this, of course, is a review for what you see in front of you, and that is the Funya Blu-ray player. Now, this model costs only about $58 at Walmart. 65 of course, when you add tax and the two-year plan, two-year protection plan, that is. Now, there is another version of this same Blu-ray player at Walmart, and maybe even Amazon.com, but the big difference between the two is not just the $10 price difference. Yeah, $10 price difference. But the difference between the two and the reason for the price difference is the fact that the $68 one has the same features, which is Netflix, YouTube, and Walmart VDU. But the big difference, besides that, the big difference is, well, not, well, it's not a big difference. Basically, the both have these same apps, but the difference between the two that make the other higher than the one that I purchased is the VDU that $68, from what I can understand, because I went on the website to look at this, from what I understand, the one that $68 has the same uh, applications of Netflix, YouTube, and Walmart VDU, but the Walmart VDU on the $68 one has more apps added onto it, has other VDU apps. Yeah, so basically with the $58 one that I purchased, you just get the VDU service. You know, in other words, where you type in a code and you get the movie you bought on Blu-ray or DVD instantly streamed onto your, uh, onto your television courtesy of the Walmart VDU service. But anyway... Besides that difference, pretty much everything else is the same. Now, let's take a look at this, shall we? Now, I've had now me and my mom have had this Blu-ray player since this past weekend, and like I said, and I highly recommend this for anybody, that if you get a Blu-ray player, whether it's one like this or one that's a little bit more, I highly recommend getting a two-year or five-year whatever protection plan you. Uh, would consider, but I highly recommend getting a protection plan for that Blu-ray player because that way if anything happens, then the store that you bought it from will have your protection plan on record and you'll be able to get it fixed or more than likely get a replacement. Now, so far the Blu-ray player is working fine. It, of course, according to the manual uh, that you get the small manual, the setup manual that you get, the owner's manual you have to download um, in PDF form um, off the website. But basically, this model here uh, came out last year in 2013. So it came out basically in time for the Christmas season. Now, Funya had been around, has been around basically for about 50 years. I didn't know about this. But they've been around for 50 years and obviously have a good reputation. Or else they wouldn't be around for 50 years. Now, would they? 
they obviously have a good reputation. And why? Because basically it seems they're associated in some way with Magnavox. <laughs> I'm not kidding. When I went to scan the $68 version or the $68 dollar, uh, version of this same model, with the difference being the additional VDU apps, the only, well, when I went to go scan it, basically, at one of those uh, scanning areas I in Walmart, one of those price scanning areas, it said Magnavox on it. I'm not lying. It said Magnavox after I scanned it. And I'm thinking, well, actually it said Funya, but the price tag said Magnavox. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. You know, so, and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Funya and Magnavox are associated with each other? That's the only thing I can think of, is they're both associated with each other, or they might be both the same company or something like that. I don't know. But both, but basically that's what the price tag said. And when I went to scan it, it matched up with the price that was on the price tag. Go figure. But anyway, like I said, the Blu-ray actually works very well. The only thing you have to do when you set up the Blu-ray, and I'm pretty sure anybody that has a Blu-ray player already knows this, is that with a Blu-ray player, especially if it has built-in Wi-Fi, you have to basically update its software. Yeah, you have to update its software. Now, what that means is the software that's on there is not up to date for what you would need, especially if that need is the blue is the BD Live function. BD Live, of course, is something that you get only on Blu-rays that allows you to online-wise have special features you can only get online. If you get what I'm saying. But anyway. Uh, but anyway, getting back to what I was saying, me and my family have had this since this past weekend. We have the protection plan and all. And basically, when I set up the Blu-ray player, the one thing I will say about this is you got to be very touch sensitive, if you will, with your remote. Now, the remote is just like any other remote. You got your eject button, you got your play button, you got your rewind button, your fast forward. The big difference is on the bottom of the remote, you have your VDU option, you have your VDU uh, button, and you have your Netflix button. By clicking on these two buttons, on, or on one of these two buttons, it will take you instantly to either the Walmart VDU service or the Netflix streaming service. Yeah. Pressing one of those would take you to either one of the services. Now, they also have a small button called Net App, and it's right in the new, it's, <laughs> it's basically right in the middle of the remote, um, right above the Netflix option, Netflix button. And this Net App takes you to the applications of, to the, network the internet based uh, section of your blu-ray that has walmart vdu netflix and youtube that's right youtube is also part of this feature now once you set this up and of course like i said what you need to do is update the software but before you can update the software you basically got to connect it to your internet. Now, since it has built-in Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi has to seek out the signal that's, it, that's close enough to it and strong enough that's close that's close enough to it and strong enough for it to feed off of. If you know what I mean, it's got to find the Wi-Fi signal that's closest and strong enough to feed off of. And 
highly recommend that you have your Wi-Fi secure, especially if you're going to have Netflix streaming. Um, if you're going to use Netflix streaming or YouTube or Walmart video, highly recommend you secure your Wi-Fi. I highly recommend that. Um, but anyway, like I said, once you connect your Wi-Fi or you wire or if you use the Ethernet option, in other words, you put a wired cable into the back of it because you can do that as well to connect to your Internet, to connect to your Internet, then you'll be fine either way. And then, then you can update your software. You can update your software. Now, once that's all said and done, then you can use the online apps. If you have a Walmart VDU uh, account, you can sign into that. If you have a Netflix account, you can sign into that. YouTube, if you have an account there, you got to do exactly what you have done before with things like Netflix and Netflix and Hulu Plus and all that when it came to maybe your gaming systems like Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS4, PS3, or even your mobile or mobile devices like your iPod, your iPad, your tablets. You basically got to put in a little code. You, got, you can sign in, but you got to put in a code. And then automatically it'll connect to that device and then that's how you will get YouTube as a part of this uh, YouTube your YouTube account activated on your blu-ray player now you don't need your account if you don't want to activate it on the YouTube on the blu-ray player you could just type in maybe your channel's name the, or the name of your channel and you can look at some of your videos like that or look at some of your friends videos the other way but if you want to check your uploads, if you want to check your subscriptions, if you want to check your playlist, then yeah, you have to sign in. And if you sign out, apparently you got to redo the code thing all over again so you can so you can get back on. That's the only thing. You got to redo the code thing with YouTube to get back on. But anyway, that's the only thing. Like I say, when you go to your Netflix, all you have to do is sign in as if you're going on to Netflix. So I'm pretty sure it's the same with Walmart VDU. I'm pretty sure it's the same with Walmart VDU. YouTube, on the other hand, it's kind of like when you're connecting a device to your application or to your account. It's just like, like I said, when you're connecting Netflix to your, your Netflix account, out to a device or your like Xbox 360 or Xbox One or or your iPad or your tablets or your Androids or your Kindles. Basically, it's like that with YouTube. But from what I've seen, all the applications work very, very well. The only thing with let's say Netflix when it comes to the Wi-Fi situation, and I'm pretty sure it'd be different if you just had it wired. If you use the Ethernet wired cable, uh, the only difference is when you're watching a movie or a show, it's in, it'll stop and go right back to the menu. Now I'm not talking to, now I'm not saying it'll go right back to the main menu where you have all your selections. No, it'll go right back to the menu to where the menu of the show of the movie you were just watching, you were just playing. And then all you would have to do is press resume plane or click on resume plane. That's all it does. That's the only thing is it'll stop almost a few minutes in and then you have to resume it. In other words, from what I can assume, and this is my opinion, from what I can assume, it's trying to, it, it's basically trying to work out the signal. It's basically adjusting itself to the Wi-Fi signal. Like I said, that is the only problem with Netflix. Like I said, unless you probably have it connected with a wired Ethernet cable to the Internet, the Wi-Fi signal will cause it to kind of at times 
stop whatever you're watching, go back to the menu or basically back to the sub menu to where you have the show where it's basically showing the movie that you're watching or the episode of the show you're watching and basically you just got to resume playing. That's the only problem. And like I said, I think it's because in my opinion, I think it's just adjusting itself to the strength of the Wi-Fi signal. Why do I say this? Well, because I have Netflix on my Xbox 360 and my Xbox 360 is wired into uh, my modem or at least into the wi into Alinsky's router, which is also connected to the modem that we have. So that's one reason. That's one reason, folks. Now, besides that, how well does it play Blu-rays and DVDs? Because we know Blu-ray players are essentially, essentially can also do backwards compatibility with DVDs. And I could say it w looks pretty, pretty, pretty well. It looks pretty damn cool. It looks pretty damn cool. Um, you could definitely see the difference in the picture. You could definitely see the difference in picture, and you could see the difference in sound. You could see that. You could see a lot more detail. I remember when I first put on the Little Mermaid Blu-ray that I've had for about a, a couple months now, thanks to Disney Movie Club, and the picture looked more clearer and more colorful and more detailed than I'd ever seen it before. Then when I did the same, then when I watched a little bit of X-Men 2, X-Men 2, um, X-Men United, when I watched a little bit of that, you could definitely see the level of detail was much better. You could definitely see that, you know, the, the, it was a lot more colorful, if you will. It was a lot more detailed. The sound was a lot better. You, it was just overall better quality. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. So that works fine when it comes to Blu-rays. Now, as far as DVDs go, it works just as fine as w fine as well. As a matter of fact, it does exactly what an up-converting DVD player does, and it up-converts the DVDs to 1080p, courtesy of NH courtesy of the HDMI that you have to connect to it. But it does up convert them. The big difference, though, that I've seen is it's a little bit more, is the colors and stuff are a little bit more colorful. And it's a little bit more detailed. Not on the level of Blu ray, grant you, but it's a little bit more colorful and a little bit more detailed than what you would see if you connected it, if you used an up converting DVD player with the HDMI cable. So the Blu-ray basically gives it a bit of a jump in bit rate, a little more so from what I've seen, my opinion, from what I've seen than a normal up-converting DVD player does with the HDMI cable. Another option that it gives you though is you can go into what is known, known as the mode section. Now mode section gives you a few options. It gives you options to the audio, um, angle, camera angles, but two other things that are notable is clear plus and noise reduction. You can, and what this means is noise reduction is you can turn the noise, you can turn the reduction of the noise or whatever noise is on the DVD or the Blu-ray, you can turn it on or you can turn it off. The clear plus is basically um, updating the contrast on the on the movie, mainly on the backgrounds. Why do I say this? Because you can also use noise reduction and clear plus when you're watching Netflix, Walmart VDU, and your YouTube videos. How do I say this? Well, how do I how do I say this? What do I mean? Well, it's real simple. Earlier this morning, I was watching one of my YouTube videos, if you will, to see how good it looked on on the courtesy of the Blu-ray, courtesy of HDMI, and of course the 
uh, HD television we have, the 1080 HD television, 1080p that is, and it looked very well, and it looked very good, even though, <laughs> even though I had filmed that in, with the 720p option, that was the 720 HD op, uh, uh, 720 HD format that my camera has. Yeah, my camera, the highest it goes in HD since it's Kodak, is 720. Go figure. But anyway, I looked at it and it looked pretty. And I looked at it and it looked very, very good. And then when I used the Clear Plus option, the backgrounds became a little bit more brighter. So you could basically it gives you a little bit more detail on most importantly the backgrounds and maybe even some of the characters or subjects in the video, but it gives you more uh, detail on the background, makes it more, as it says, crisp and clear to see. So that's what the clear plus option is on, uh, on, the, uh, on this Blu-ray. Now, the one thing that kind of disappointed me, though, was it doesn't have a zoom option. Yeah, it doesn't have a zoom option. I'm sure other Blu-ray players do. I'm pretty sure maybe the $68 one might have it. But, and I'm pretty sure other Blu-ray players have it as well. But the thing is, it, it is not here on this uh, Blu-ray player. It's not, and that's kind of a disappointment. However, the one option that's very popular with people like me is still on there although it's a little tricky to figure out. You see, with DVD players, with some DVD players, or majority of them, all you would have to do is press pause on a picture or a certain scene, if you will, and then just continuously press pause or step, the button step, I believe, to basically go frame by frame, step by step of a on a certain scene. For example, one of my favorite cartoon shorts growing up, even though it came out way before my time, was the 1956 Popeye cartoon, Polyvoo Woos. Now at the end of the cartoon, one of my favorite one of the f funniest things, in my opinion, that I've seen at the end of a Popeye cartoon happens, and that is Olive melts into a puddle of butter, which is a face on the puddle, and it's run and she's and and she's running down and she's basically running down the or flowing down, running down the floor at the end of the cartoon. Now, now usually you're able to have the option of, I'm trying to look and see if maybe this one, one that I see here d has it, no it doesn't. I'm looking at remotes, I'm looking at a remote here. Hold on for a sec. Again, okay, sorry about that. But again, looking at the, um, the remote I have now, which is a Magnavox uh, remote to the DVD player I now have in my room, basically it has the pause button. And it also says underneath it, slow. Now what that means basically is you press it. Basically what it means is the remote is built to basically, basically what it's saying is that when they designed this remote, it was built to basically allow you to press pause to pause a movie, but also go step by step, frame by frame on a certain scene. Now, like I said, I would do that at times with, you know, with that scene with Olive melting into a puddle into a puddle of butter from the 1956 cartoon, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Same thing with Minerva Mink in her two solo cartoons, Moon Over Minerva and Meet Minerva, when she does the same thing, when she melts. 
However, the big difference I have noticed, maybe it's my imagination, but what I have noticed is when you do the step-by-step -step thing with the Funya Blu-ray, you get more of a step-by-step, step-by-step, frame-by-frame process than you ever did with a step by ever did with the uh, a DVD player. It's almost like instead of going like a second or a mill or two seconds or five seconds ahead or something like that, it's actually going like a millisecond. It's like it's giving you more detail, if you will, with the pausing and the step by step process. And you get again, like I say, more detail of how the scene was basically was created and how it came about. You basically get, like I said, you get more detail. You get more of a an idea of how they had to draw the picture, if it's a cartoon, in this certain scene, how they had to draw it. So that's the big difference when it comes to the step-by-step -step option between the Funya Blu-ray, between a Blu-ray player, especially the one, uh, basically the one I have, this Funya, uh, me and my mom, I should say, have uh, the Funya player compared to a compared to the Magnavox DVD player that I have. Now, again, like I said, the only the only negative I will say is it doesn't have a zoom option. Now, if any of you have a Funya out there or have this DVD player, or not DVD, but have this Blu-ray player, I should say, and you know if it has it, and if it does have a zoom function. And if it does have a zoom function, if you will, will some of you let me know? Because I don't see it. I don't see it on the remote at all. But anyway, like I said, even though that's a minus, the positive, the plus, is the step-by-step, frame-by-frame option, which is basically dubbed step-by-step -step playback is a lot more better than I've ever seen on a DVD because it seems to give you more detail and it goes a little slower to give you that detail. It doesn't like go a few seconds up. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. Now, now for anybody that may have this DVD, may ha not DVD, but have this Blu-ray player, for anybody that may have this Blu-ray player and you're a fan of step-by-step -step playback, you're probably wondering, how do you do it? Well, it's quite simple. According to the owner's manual that I saw online, that I read online, according to the owner's manual, all you have to do is press pause and then go to the direction, and then go to the chapter buttons. That's right, the chapter buttons that are right next to it. Not the left and right buttons, not the left and right buttons that are above them, but the ones that are right next to it. The ones with the line right next to the l to the uh, fa to the Ford uh, logo, to the Ford sign, and the right and the rewind sign. If you get what I'm saying, you press one of those, and that's how you do step by step. You press pause, basically, and you go to the button right next to the pause button, or a little over, and that's the fast forward, and that's the forward chap, and that's the chapter button to go forward, or the forward chapter button. You just press that, and that's your step-by-step -step option. Same with going in reverse. So that's how you do step-by-step. -step. And again, like I said, the positive is it's a lot more detailed when it, you do this, you get a lot more detail when you do this because it doesn't go as fast or as, you know, it doesn't go by five or something seconds. Basically, it goes a lot slower. Basically, like I said, it goes a lot slower than, um, than what you've been used to before. So that's pretty cool. Um, Overall, it's it's not that bad. It's not a bad system. It's not really. It's not a bad player whatsoever. Now, it does give you the option to put in a flash drive if you want to, or connect your Kodak camera or camera period. I think 
So you could probably view pictures on there as well as probably view videos. Probably view videos, not saying you would. But it gives you that option because it has a USB port in the front. So you can, like I say, connect a flash drive to it with video if if the flash drive obtain, uh, contains um, contains uh, pictures or video, you can connect it to the USB co uh, USB uh, slot in front of the Blu-ray player. And the same can be said for your Kodak camera and probably your cameras in general, maybe your DV uh, video cameras, whatever, you can do that. Now, now, I believe from what I've read, you can also have a DVD, maybe a Blu-ray disc or DVD disc of videos and pictures saved up. And I think you can view them on the Blu-ray player as well as maybe if the videos are playable, play them on the Blu-ray as well. So that's a good option. That's a good option to, to have either way. Whether, you, whether you've got it on a flash drive and you just want to connect it in, or if you have it on a DVD or even a re recordable Blu-ray disc for data that you use for data, then you can watch it like that as well. It also, of course, plays CDs and probably a lot clearer and better than usual. And I think that's why the no noise reduction is offered as an op uh, is offered in mode basically allows you to reduce the noise of maybe the song or something like that I'm not really sure but overall for what I paid add on tax and the add on the taxing taxes and the two year plan for what I've paid overall I have to say it's worth it so far and again, I highly recommend for anybody that's thinking of getting a Blu-ray player, I highly recommend this. Whether you're getting a Blu-ray player or, or you're deciding to go stream, go in the direction of streaming, and you decide to get one of those Ruko devices or whatever, I highly recommend getting a two-year to maybe three and at the most five-year protection plan. Because you get a protection plan and it reassures you that whatever happens to your device, you will either be able to get it fixed for free or you'll get a replacement. So I highly recommend you guys doing that. But overall, if I was to recommend a budgetable, cost-efficient, and as of right now, reliable Blu-ray player that's Basically, affordable. Basically, if I basically if I was to recommend a very affordable Blu-ray player that works within your budget, then I highly recommend. I highly recommend getting this one, or maybe the one that's sixty-eight dollars. So those are the two I would recommend. I would. I would recommend this brand, or I recommend maybe the LG brand or maybe even the Philips brand, depending on what your, fla your flavor of brand device is, if you get what I'm saying. So <laughs> anyway, I do highly recommend getting a Blu-ray player. Highly recommend trying out the Funya right now. They do have, obviously, 50 years of excellence. And from what I saw when I got this one, this along with the others there, well, there was only three left three left of this one and when I got this one when I got my when, when I got me and my mom's blu-ray player they were only down to two the day I got it so before I got it there was three left when I got it there was two left kind of tells you how popular and how popular it was among Christmas buyers if you know what I'm saying or just sales uh, <laughs> buyers if you know what I'm saying but anyway, I do highly recommend this tr trying this brand out. It is reliable. Again, the only thing is, it, if you're into the step-by-step -step playback thing, it's got that. But if you're into the step-by-step -step playback thing with the addition of zooming in on the picture, 
it does not have that. It does not have the zoom option. If it does, again, somebody let me know. But anyway, my review on this is I highly recommend it. And that's all I'm going to say. Let me know what you guys think. And let me know if any of you have a Funya out there. Or a Funya or Funya, <laughs> whatever. And I'll talk to you all later. Comments are welcome. God bless. Take care.